Welcome to midweek. That's right, 30 minutes in the middle of your week with the purpose, what's the purpose? To dive a little bit deeper into the message, the content that we've heard on Sunday, to ask questions, to wrestle a little bit with the hard truth, and to come together in community to dive a little bit deeper and to apply the things that we're learning. So I hope that you'll engage. I hope that you'll connect. I hope you'll invite someone, right? Share this content right now to invite others into the journey together. And now, let's dive in deep to this episode of Midweek. Hey, welcome to Wednesday uh, in midweek. This is something new we're calling midweek. And uh, welcome my good friend, Brian Charette. Hey, Brian. Hey, good to be here. Doing all right? Welcome, everybody. The first episode of midweek. How do you feel about that? I can tell. I'm on the the maiden voyage. (laughs) That's right. With you as host. I feel excited. I thought you were going to say you're on the edge of your seat, and that would be a lie because you're sitting back. No, I'm sitting back. Not comfortable. For those of you who can't see at home, I'm sitting back comfortably. That's it. I'm relaxed. (laughs) Um, so a lot of you watching, if you're familiar with our church, uh, HFCN, you know, Brian a little bit, he's been around and been a wonderful leader. I've been around. You've been around. Um, but for those of you that don't, I'm going to have you introduce yourself and then we're going to have a little bit of fun. Okay. Uh, the point of midweek is we're diving in a little bit deeper to some of the content and teaching that's happened on Sunday. So if you didn't get to hear that, if you didn't get to jump online and and experience that, check out our website at beaconofhope.org. You can go on right now and listen and and watch, and maybe it would even help you understand this a little bit better. If you didn't see it though yet, we'll we'll definitely help you follow along. But before we do that, yeah, Brian, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we're going to have a little bit of fun getting to know you a little bit better. You know what I'm thinking about right now? (laughs) Please. I'm telling you what I'm thinking about. What happens if I touch my face? I just did. Because we're I'm asking to, as we're I'm touching my face. We're supposed to be the model That's right. for health. And so I'm thinking, don't touch your face. Don't touch your face. I just did it. But if I do, that. listeners at home, if I do, disregard that. Right. And still you do your own health. Right. Don't, mo- don't do as we're modeling. <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to try not to. But who now, now the problem is everybody's going to focus on that. They're yeah. going to scrub forward. My nose will itch that the entire time. time. Okay, uh, so my name's Brian Charette. Um, I am married to Pam, and I've been married to Pam for over 30 years. 30, it's a long time. Going on 34 years. Wonderful, glorious woman. I have two daughters. Oldest daughter is Suzanne, who lives and works in Northern Virginia. And youngest daughter is Aubrey, who some of you know. If you come to HFCN, Aubrey is often up on stage. She's a beautiful girl, beautiful voice, and she's also on staff. I'm originally from Worcester, Massachusetts. I grew up in Massachusetts. Um, I served in the Marine Corps. I uh, have I've had multiple different careers. Uh, I now uh, full time I work at James Madison University. If you're not from around here, it's Dukes. Uh, right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so I work at JMU, which is in Harrisonburg. And I the reason I'm sitting here is because I have the privilege of every once in a while filling in the pulpit for Pastor Adrian, lead pastor Adrian. That's it. I make him call me that. I forgot pastor. once to call him lead pastor, and it did not go Didn't well. Didn't go well. <laughs> he's the lead. If you're not at HFCN, he's the lead pastor, yeah. the senior overarching poobah of the church, and and deserves our utmost respect. Ridiculous. So, so every once yeah. in a while, I fill in for him on the pulpit, and I did so last Sunday. That's right. And so this is midweek, this first episode of right. midweek. Um, and you're on the hot seat, really. That's, that's why I'm here, because I happen to be the one delivering the message um, on Sunday. Yeah. What else you want to know about Well, me? so some weeks you'll tune in, and I might be in the hot seat, but you this be. week I get to ask him the questions, which Would is Would I ever be fun. in the cold seat? Maybe. Maybe we'll have you come back and be in the cold seat. I'd like and... to be in the cold I don't want the pressure on me, though, for the first one. So what I'd like you to do is... Keep going off this and linking, clicking back on it again, so it appears that it was a very lots popular. of views. So if lots you of would views. just get off now and then <laughs> click and come back and keep coming back over and over, so that our lead pastor says, "Wow, nobody had the kind of views yeah. that you did." Ten thousand views. There's, there's, there were more people who watched <laughs> than people who have the internet. It's a miracle. So if you that's you can help me doing mind that. blown. All right, so I'm going to borrow this from a podcast that um, my wife, Lauren, listens to regularly, and every now and then... You mean wife of lead pastor? Yes, okay. she's awesome. But uh, from the Jamie Ivey podcast, great, but, but she often, when she's 
talking to someone, wants to know them better. She, I think she actually closes with this, but we'll open. Um, she says, what's three things that you're into? And <laughs> I've done this with our pastors before and staff. It's actually really fun. Three things. That and I'm so I'm into. not going to preface it other than to say, yeah, three things that you like right now, three new habits, three, an exciting wow. show you're watching, a new okay, well, salad, that. new salad dressing that just <laughs> has you so thrilled out of your mind. Diet Coke flavor that's just blowing your mind. So yeah, I won't preface it with any, but what's three things that Brian Shred's three, into right uh, now? Three things that I'm into. Uh, not watching shows. Okay. Um, I, because I just, I like to write and do stuff like that. And so I never really get into watching shows. No judgment. Although I have to be honest. Can you be into being disappointed about something? Sure. Okay. But, uh, this then, is your your. Then I'm going to go with that. Seat. Okay. Um, one of my guilty pleasures um, is James Bond movies. Okay. And there was supposed to be in April the last Daniel Craig James Bond movie. Yeah. Uh, no Time to Die, I think it is. And because of the virus, now I understand a lot of bad thing, thing, worse things happen because of the virus, but because of the virus, there was no James Bond. It's, it's postponed till. So you're into being disappointed I'm about that. Into being dis- if there's a picket <laughs> line, you're leading the charge. <laughs> no, I, I don't blame them. Yeah. I don't hold Daniel but Craig bummed. responsible. But that's one of, like, that's one of the things I do watch. Okay. I like James Bond movies. Okay. Because you can go back, because I'm really old. Um, and so I go back a long way. And so I've watched all of the James Bond movies. I know they don't have Christian themes, and I don't want you to send me emails. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. Um, they don't. But you're into Bond. That's, but that's I like cool. him. So that's one. Okay. Uh, what else? I like, people don't uh, know this, but um, my workouts involve MMA training really um, which I I got into I have a personal trainer uh, Rand McCarty who's really great and she was an MMA fighter and so she translated MMA stuff into a workout and I want to be faithful in my workouts and so one of the one of the tools I have a workout is just this morning I was Hitting a heavy bag and a Man, spin bag to work out. And it's, I had no idea. And it's really, I recommend it because it, it's really fun and it takes your mind off, so you know, sort of I'm working okay. out. Um, so, kind of MMA style training. Well, let's not go crazy now. Well, I know. I'm trying no, to define not. what your second thing <laughs> I just, is. I don't want you to think that I'm a professional okay. MMA. Well, a lot I'm of people put you look at my physique anytime, and so. say, he must be a professional yeah. <laughs> ultimate fighting championship. Yeah, okay. I don't want people to think that All right. of well, me because they might be intimidated or afraid. When they see me, but so, James Bond MMA style training. You see it. So what's the third <laughs> thing? Being a theme, uh, I better pick something nice. Yeah. Um, I, I, let me a, let me ask. I'll, I'll do a food I wish I could eat. Okay. A food I wish was healthy. Okay. Because I've asked that question to icebreakers okay. before. What's one food where if they could make it completely healthy, you would want to eat it? And this would be what? What, what is it for you? Oh man. Because um, mine's easy. I mean, I eat way more ice cream than I should anyway, but that would probably be it because then I could eat it like every day. My, um, my, mine would easily be ravioli. Okay. I, um, I grew up in an Italian house in Massachusetts, and so we, I was you know, raised on Italian food. Now, of course, there's a whole lot of carbs in pasta yeah. and stuff, so ravioli is not, unfortunately, is so not... So you're into it, but not literally into it. Not, you're just yeah. into the idea Isn't that of it. interesting how yeah. I chose into things that I'm not into? Right. Like I'm into Bond, but I'm really into being disappointed <laughs> about right. Bond. I'm so, into MMA, but I'm not so an MMA fighter. I'm into I, ravioli, but I can't eat it. I got so, you. But that would, be, that would tell you something about me, that I w- of all the foods mm-hmm. that I wish were healthy, it would not be sweets. Sweets don't really attract me, but a nice ravioli, oh, man, that would be great. All right. We're going to dive in in just a minute before we do that. I'm ready. Word association, okay? Oh my I'm going to say how something. How much warm-up can we do? I know, but people want to know. They want to see behind the, the veil. So just in a, in a sentence or less, it could even be a one-word answer, okay? okay. Um, word now, association. Now, let the audience know that I have not been prepared. There's no preparation here. You, you did not give me these. I'm questions. actually going to skip. The first one was going to be the best meal, but clearly that's ravioli. ravioli. I okay. love ravioli. Next, the best city. Nice. The best city, well, I guess, Bridgewater, where I live. Bridgewater. Wow. I, I the mean, best I know it's city not, in the I, world, I mean, no, Bridgewater. That's what you're asking me, right? Well, I don't know. Uh, Just whatever you, your answer. The best city I've ever been to that's not Bridgewater. Okay. Um, I... I don't like New Orleans. 
Okay. And I say that because everybody loves New Orleans. I've been to New Orleans several times for conferences and things, and I don't like it. So this is going to seem really weird when I tell you what city I like. I I like Dallas. Okay. And I the reason I say that I hesitate is because I've heard people say, "Oh, I hate Dallas," but for some reason I just like the culture and. Yeah. I remember I, when I went to Dallas one time, I took a walk in Dealey Plaza, where the unfortunately the president was assassinated. But Pre- Dealey Plaza is a de- the place in Dallas where where Kennedy was assassinated, okay. and I just thought it was fascinating to sort of be in a place that I'd seen a thousand times but had never actually yeah, been there. I've never been there. And it, 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 da- the people were friendly in Dallas. You could get a cab anytime you wanted to. Uh, went to great restaurants so i live in bridgewater i love but the Dallas Shenandoah valley cool. but if you're asking me to pick a okay. american city that ha- that i have positive feelings about it's dallas all right two more the best song of all time no explanation needed just the best song you know i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you what i think the best song is you said what's the best song um i used to be long time ago I used to be a radio dj so i know a lot of songs but one of my favorite artists is a Christian artist named Susan Ashton. Okay. And I love her voice. You ask my family. Okay. And they say it's kind of weird. Okay. <laughs> um, in fact, her album, Angels of Mercy, note it, write it down, Susan Ashton, Angels of Mercy. We're rushing to it's our... From, it's from the 90s. Our Amazon, but, or our uh, to, Spotify. Along album. with yeah. the um, Crowder Church Music and DC Talk, Jesus Freak. I would say those are the three most important Christian okay. albums ever. So there's a song on um, Susan Ashton's album, um, Angels of Mercy, called Better Angels of Our Nature. And I bet if you go to my phone, I bet I've played it over a thousand wow. times. Right. It's just a great, it's a, it's a thoughtful song. It is a godly song, and she just nails it. And it's well orchestrated, and so I'm going to say that Better Angels of Our Nature okay. by Susan Ashton, because that's probably the most played song on my phone. Last one. The best There's more? The best book. Now, not the Bible. That's easy, but you read a lot, so just right now, the, the best book. Right oh, now. right now, right the now. best just the best right book. Right now, the best book. Because I was going to, you know, the first book I go to when people ask me about books like that... My fallback is a book called The Ragamuffin Gospel. I love that book. Do, yeah. You know it, Brandon Absolutely. Manning? Absolutely, yeah. Um, that's one of those books. It's, it's really interesting because it is a book about the grace of God and the extravagant grace of God. I, it's interesting. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about yeah. it. That, I, I, sometimes I, struggle, that I sometimes struggle recommending it to people because it's extravagant. It yeah. is about... The extra and some people just can't handle that. They yeah. they need yeah, yeah they need rules. Yeah, and uh, so the most influential uh, Francis Schaeffer is a writer who's influenced the way I think in terms of my faith. But that one book, A Ragamuffin Go- Gospel by Brennan Manning, is the most influential book. It's a great answer. But the reason I hesitate is because if people go and get it, it ch- it's sure. really challenging. It's not. It's a wonderful read, but it's not an easy read because you'll read parts of it and you'll say, you know, that can't be right. And then you go to the scripture and you, yeah. you know, for Brennan Manning, that's the nature of the cross. Grace was the nature of the cross. Jesus paying prices you couldn't and wouldn't pay and it applying to the deepest, darkest parts of our lives. So that's the most influential book great. I've ever read, but it's not a hot new well, that's okay. read. It's great. All right, we're diving in. Okay, what is it like? To time to we have four minutes left. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thanks so for joining us. We're in the That's midst the, of our series called Drifting. Yeah, and uh, we're actually going to conclude the series next week. But you spoke on a topic which we we kind of did talk leading up to yes. that we we said, man, uh, in the midst of the pandemic that we're dealing with, where um, social distancing, which I didn't know what that yes. was two months ago, but but the topic was isolation. And for those that did watch or listen in. For those that didn't, could you give us just a brief one-minute recap of um, specifically why why not isolation? Why okay. must we fight that in our lives? Why is that important? Well, let me make a comment first because you said it, I think, two weeks ago. Uh, for those of you who are who attend HFCN and are familiar with the way Pastor Adrian works, 
This series called Drifting, the nature of the series is how we literally drift into problematic areas in our life. And it's, it's amazing because Pastor Adrian usually plans out series literally months in advance. And so this series, Drifting, yeah. was not something that was conjured up in the last couple of weeks in the midst of COVID-19. I think he started working on it in November. Yeah. And so yeah. now it's coming up. And it's crazy to for, see how it lines up. Yeah, it yeah. is. For instance, last week was on isolation, which was really timely. The week before that was how we drift into a misuse of technology. And how how yeah. timely is that? As people are watching it on Facebook <laughs> yes, Live. Right. And they're social. Yeah. So it's really been interesting about how this has coincided with everything that's going on in the world. So the, na- the nature of the message was based on the Apostle Paul's characterization of us as believers as a body. We're not just a family. We're not just right. a social club. We're not just a group. We are so intertwined as people that the best analogy the Bible can come up with for us is that we're the body of Christ and we're joined together like a body is joined together. And one part depends on another part like the body. One part depends on another part. And so when we drift and, and we define drifting as sort of a over time, a gradual, imperceptible float away from the things of God. And as as we said last week, it was where we eventually drift and technology sort of runs us rather than us running technology. And the second one this past Sunday was how we drift to a point of isolation um, where we are, we separate ourselves and we defined isolation as being spiritually or emotionally disconnected, um, where you lose moorings and attachment both to the Lord, either or to the Lord or to your family, to the others in the body of Christ. And you find yourself out there and right. you're on right. your own. And uh, I, I said there were three problems with that. The first problem, sometimes we think of as most important. And my point on Sunday was it's not the most important. Hmm. Usually the first thing we think of is if I'm isolated, I'm in danger. Right. And that's exactly right. If you are a believer and you find yourself isolated from meaningful relationships, emotional and spiritual relationships with brothers and sisters all around you, that's a dangerous place to be in. The enemy wants to pick you off. And mm-hmm. I use the example of, you know, I, I cited an old television show I used to watch called Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. And you would watch these scenes where the hyenas would be stalking the wildebeest and it was always the hyenas and the wildebeest and you knew exactly how it was going to work even today as i'm saying this if you didn't even hear the message and i'm describing to you the hyenas stalking the wildebeest in your mind you know what's going to happen and that is the hyenas who are way smaller than the wildebeest are going to isolate they're going to separate out a wildebeest, a weak one, a slow one, a drifting one, a right. young one, whatever yeah. it is. And they're going to eat the wildebeest, and the wildebeest is going to be outside the protection of the herd and die. And so the first thing we think of in isolation is that, that if we allow ourselves to be isolated, we're, we're in picked, danger. Picked off, yeah. We're going to be picked. We can be picked off. The enemy is just waiting for that. And I suggested on Sunday, and I mean, you can push back on this, but I, I suggested that that's normally what we think of, but I don't think that's the most important reason mm. not to be isolated. And I suggested there were two reasons that were more important. The first was connection is the design of God for the New Testament church, period. He, for, for all of his reasons, and some we know and some we don't, he's designed us to be a, a body joined together, interlocking. The word is koinonia, and it's the most intimate hmm. of, of words. We are designed by God for a number of reasons to be connected. And Jesus was the model. Jesus, who could have been isolated, yeah, you would have justified if Jesus yeah. was independent. He was the Messiah, and he chose to be connected in all circumstances. And so the to me, the most important reason not to be isolated is that it eats at, attacks the plan and design of God. So to me, that's more important than the fact that isolation puts you in danger. 
Um, and I'm going to ask you a question in a minute. But the second one was, we need each other. Yeah. Um, if you're isolated, what if you are isolated the moment someone in your church family needs you? And it was God's design that you would be there. There are people right. who are beside you who need you. And the family serves the family and we help each other. Is there a better example of what we're going through now and how important it is? Yeah. So sure. let me ask you a question. I, sure. I answered your question. Yeah. Those are the three reasons. I suggested that the first reason we think is that isolation puts us in danger. And that that my argument was that's not the most important, and mm. you just heard. Do you agree with that? That we usually think of that being the number one reason not to be isolated. Is that true, or what would you say people think is most dangerous about being isolated? Yeah, I, I think there's a pride that comes with isolation. That um, again, this series kind of addresses that very few people would just say. Um, in terms of isolation, I don't need anybody. I'm yeah. gonna, I'm, going, I'm going rogue. I'm, you yeah. know, uh, what what happens with drifting is just slowly That's they right. push people away. Slowly they disengage from meaningful community. Slowly they, um, I, I wrote this down because it helped me. Our, our definition of isolation was when secrets grow and growing stops. Yeah. And so slowly they um, they keep secrets. They don't let people in. But I do think there's some pride that develops with that. That basically says I, I don't need anyone. But yeah, I, I see kind of two and three as two A and two B. I think yeah. that idea that we are created for community and in that we're actually created. Um, and what I'll say often to somebody is you may think you don't need them, but maybe they need you um, because Absolutely. really it's that idea. Um, it it kind of leads me to a question I had for you actually in okay. that there are some people I hope that are watching this that are not believers I try often when we preach on Sunday morning to celebrate those that are in the room that are skeptics, that are not yet believers, because I'm just so grateful that they would want to listen and want to be present. And so speak to someone listening today that doesn't have faith. Um, maybe they did at one point in their life and they've kind of drifted and they're not really sure that faith in Christ is something they even want. Speak to that person about this idea of isolation and why it matters, because I do think um, there's something even in the way that we're designed, in the way that we're created, that points back to this idea yeah. of needing connection. One of the things I would I'd say is, uh, it was a few years ago, and I was reading a study, and I can't cite it, so forgive me, but it was a study of what people talk about when they know they're nearing the end of their life. Hmm. Um, and you can guess what they talk about. They talk about relationships. Um, and so even if you don't know the Lord and haven't responded to a call and maybe aren't, you're not even sure whether God exists, I think one thing is true, probably, that you want your life to be as good as it can be. Um, you don't know about all this spiritual stuff, uh, but you do know you want to live a life fulfilled. Very few people say, I want to waste my life. Yeah. And right. so I think one of the ways that your life has meaning is through the connections that you develop. And this study was saying that that's what people tend to think about mm. when they're, when they know they're going to, you know, whether they're old, old, or just, you know, they're just passing away and they know they don't have long to live. They play the tape and they evaluate their life based on the quality of their relationships. And if you are someone who isolates, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, yeah. or, that's to me, that's the biggest loss. Not just that you have a lot to give to people that they won't get if you're isolated, but it's really how you will end up thinking about your life. And so isolation fights that. And so I would think that no matter what your faith approach is, you want to you wanna go out having impacted people because that's yep. and yep. ultimately how you will evaluate your life. And I, I would say one of the things I find that we're constantly addressing by in our preaching and teaching on Sunday morning and beyond is this cultural idea that really looks out for number one and, and me, me, me. Yeah. It's about my comfort and my happiness. And um, that is a life that tends to lead to isolation that tends to lead yep. to yep and so i think that this kind of even even if you don't have that faith foundation 
um, I, I think it tends to kind of combat that view of it, it's not just about me. Yeah. I have uh, one question I want to get to and then just kind of a final thought. Okay. Um, I know you're an introvert. You're I like, am. If, if introvert was there in the dictionary, it would be your picture. I am. I am a lot more extroverted than you, though I tend to find my balance in the middle. Speak briefly as an introvert. How do you know when you're drifting? How do you know when you can identify um, not just, hey, I'm, this is my personality. I like to be alone. But when you something in your life that you can identify to say, ooh, I'm drifting towards isolation. That's kind of easy because I've, I've thought that through. I, I've been thinking about this for a long, long time. For me, it's secrets. For me, if I feel like I got a lot of, you know, yeah. if I roll through my day, how my life is going... And I end up with a bunch of things that only I know about me, that my closest friends don't know, that my wife doesn't know. That's the biggest evidence to me because in the past, years and years ago, I got to a point where I was actually living two lives. I had so many secrets that it was, it, it eventually broke me emotionally. Hmm. Um, and so that's, I'm very sensitive when I walk through my day and my life and my thought processes. How much of this stuff is just mine and I'm sort of cloistered and hiding and how much am I talking to my closest trusted friends about it etc so that to me as an introvert introversion is okay there's a lot of great introverts right. and I'm yeah. comfortable being an introvert but it's I'm not comfortable being on an island and I'm not comfortable being unknown and I think it's really important if I'm going to be part of the body for me to be known and and vulnerable sure and understandable and when I have a lot of secrets that's how I know. And what I would say to the extroverted side of that, because I certainly can at least understand that perspective, I think you can be extroverted and still be isolated. Oh, because absolutely. I almost think the temptation there is to have so many relationships that are an inch deep. Yep. And I I struggle sometimes with even being in a relationship, I'll, I'll always talk about the other person yep. and kind of avoid the conversation going back to yep. me. And so I think that secrets idea is still... When you're surrounded by lots of relationships that lack depth in any of them, I agree. Um, last last question as we prepare to close. Um, really, this this is just a, a way for us to go a little bit deeper. And so, I want you to leave us with the last minute that we have with one practical step. Um, people that are watching today, no matter who they are, where they are in in their faith, personality type. What's a next step? What's a clear next step to say, I don't want to drift, uh, especially in this season where we are naturally a little bit more distanced than yeah. we'd want to be. What's one step that you would say to, to instead of drifting, to pursue God's plan uh, for relationships? It's interesting you use the word pursue because that's what I was going to say. Um, one of the illustrations from Sunday was a, a gentleman who was a wonderful man of God, and he was, he was described as a people pursuer. And that's, that's my practical advice. What would it mean for you today to be considered a people pursuer? Would it mean you begin a habit of writing letters? Would it mean you hmm. make a phone call each mm -hmm. day that's meaningful for you? In your personality, in your makeup, what would it mean for you to be described as a people pursuer? And that's whatever good. that is... That's my practical advice. Yeah, and that's what it means, not just to pursue a relationship with God, but to pursue, yep. in Christ, godly relationships. Man, it's been good. It's been fun. Anytime I could do this for hours, but I, I, thanks for joining in. Thanks. Uh, we love having you be a part of what we're calling Midweek. Join us again next Wednesday as we dive a little bit deeper. Thanks, Brian. Thanks. Thanks.